This week we'll see the semi-finals of the 2019 Curry Cup and I'll get into that right now. Welcome back to Skinny Brew Rugby guys. So it is semi-finals time and it is the Lions versus the Hrikwas and then the Free State Cheetahs up against the Sharks. This year the tournament was a little bit shorter than other years. The teams only playing each other once but I must say the tournament was a little bit more interesting with that dynamic to me and I think uh, it had more of an edge to me and one thing that was very important, uh, the box didn't have a massive influence. Teams didn't just bring all their spring box back into the, to the teams and then improve the side as the season goes on and then just ultimately win the season because of having a lot of spring box. That's going to happen this weekend as well. There isn't a lot of spring box in either of the sides. So I think we are up for some good games. All the teams are pretty uh, even in this weekend's round. I also have some exciting news. Next week I will be doing a podcast with a Kiwi living up in Japan. He is also a YouTuber. His name is The Imbiber. I will link everything down in the description below. I will be talking to him about what we can expect as Springbok fans for the World Cup and also for the game we are playing next week. Be sure to check that one out. It will be a great one. Here is my predictions for the weekend. First up we have the Lions versus the Hrikwas and this is literally the reverse fixture of last weekend's game. Uh, the game that cost the Hrikwas their home semi-final but it was only by one point and I think the Hrikwas will kick themselves in this one. Last weekend's game was a good one but neither team really had the edge in that one. As I said before the season has been very close for the Lions though. If you go through their record win by one point, win by two point, win by two points then a loss by five points, a loss by two points and then last weekend's game where they won by one point. But their home record at the moment one win at home and then three wins away from home. So maybe they would have preferred to actually play away from home because their home record in Johannesburg hasn't been the best. They are going up against a team that has been exceptional the whole season except for one game. But they have been the real deal. You could see that they are challenging for the cup for this whole season. Unfortunate to lose last week but that's just the nature of the game. That is how rugby works. Their season so far, two out of three away record, um, one win over the Sharks and then one away victory also against the Blue Bulls. Meaning I think they could actually do it in Johannesburg as well because they actually did face some big opposition away from home and actually did beat them there as well. History though doesn't say the same thing. In the last 10 games they've only won three times and then the away wins. The last time they've won in Johannesburg is in 2017. Then before that 2012 and then 2009. So it is usually long times between wins there. So the Lions they made no changes to their starting side this weekend. The lineouts went a little bit better last weekend for them with Ori in the side. Then they lose forwards Brank, Skuman and Diamane. They're just an outstanding loose trio to have in any side. Reynolds, he's been good this whole season with Cronier at number 9. He just brings that little bit of experience to an uh, inexperienced number 10. Similane at number 13. Very good. He's one to watch for the future. And then, of course, that back three of the Lions, Pinar, Tambue, and Green. They can run rings over, around anyone in any team. Ulengo is on, going to make his debut if he actually comes off the bench. He is actually back into professional rugby. That's good to see. He's been in the docks and no one has seen him for a while. It's good to see me being from Bloemfontein. Um, it's good to see a guy from Bloemfontein actually being back. Remember, he is actually a Springbok having that one cap behind his name. So we want to see him do well again. For the Hrikwas, they also have mostly the same team. They have Fulmunk at 15. He's also been ex exciting. Swartz and Hasnar at 12-13 combo. A great combination all season. 
as well. They've just been tearing every team that they've been facing apart. At number 10, Whitehead has actually very, uh, been very impressive to me. He's a little bit more experienced by now. He's never been really at the top um, of rugby. He's never been like really at the best teams, but he's always been here at the EP Kings and he's been at the Grikwas a couple of times and Griffins if I remember correctly and there he just looks at his own he really is playing well he does look um, experienced he does he's one of those silent types of number 10s really doing his thing uh, just uh, spreading the ball wide kicking when he should kicking into gaps he's been a key role in that side for them to actually do that this well this season. Then another Springbok on the bench for the Griquas this time, Bjorn Basson. So there's two Springbok wingers on a bench for each side. For me, it is a difficult call to make. The Griquas can do a little bit more than they did last weekend. Most people would call the Lions in this one, but my predictions have went really, really, really badly this whole season. So I'm going the opposite of everyone else and just going and doing the Hail Mary in this one and going with the Griquas. I mean, they have nothing to lose. Uh, they've been playing like that this whole season, like they have nothing to lose. And they would want to reward their fans that has been backing them the whole season. Um, so I think the Griquas will win this one by 5 points. Then we have the Free State Cheetahs up against the Sharks. The Cheetahs of course they finished at the top of the log now at the end of the season. In a very high scoring game last weekend. Um, but the seasons for the two sides, 4 out of 6 for both of them. Uh, none, of them, none of them have been very convincing, the Sharks especially, but they, they didn't start out convincing, but then they won their last three games actually. Narrow victories though, but they have turned the page a little bit. As for the Cheetahs, they've won two games, then they lost two games, and then, now they won two games again. The last four games have all been narrow margins, so... Not convincing either. For the Cheetahs, probably all season long, they've been falling behind and then having to catch up throughout the game every time. They do give away a lot of penalties in the first half or in the first quarter of the game and that's really costing them and making them have to work a lot harder throughout the game. They've also been making poor decisions throughout the, the, the season as well around penalties and I know I've been saying this over and over and over but they still do it when they should be going for poles they go for the line or vice versa look sometimes it does actually pay off and I think that's probably the problem with it 20% of the time or 30% of the time it does pay off for them and that's why they're doing it and in big games like a semi-final and a final you should take the points every single time you can. For the Sharks, as I said, they've been, they were really poor at a stage, but they really improved, pr improved through the season now. And they are the only team in the semi-finals that have a bunch of Springboks back in their team. Up front, you can start with Thomas Dutue is back in the side. He's partnering with Kuni Westhuizen, so it's two Springbok props in the front. Then you have Cohen Bosch at number 10 who's back as well. He's with the young Nohamba who has really impressed me as well. He looks like one for the future. And then Esterizen at number 12. He's uh, joining up with Jeremy Ward. That number 12-10 combo with Bosch and Esterizen is going to be very important. Those two Springboks to link up together. Then of course the exciting back three also has one Springbok. Mvovo the veteran. And then Van Wyk and then the exciting Fassi who just continues to impress every week. I think if he just picks up a little bit of weight maybe, uh, just a little bit of more size, he can be a world beater, that guy. For the Cheetahs, the team has been building as they are preparing for the upcoming Pro 14 season. Um, guys like Dweba, the hooker, he's been great for them. Pinar at number 9. Sometimes guys criticize old guys in a team, but he's sometimes been a little bit too fast for those young guys around him. Uh, he really wants to uh, speed up the game sometimes, and that's good for the Cheetahs. That's the type of game they want to play. Skuman uh, at 10, he has been doing really well. He's been very influential in their team as well. 
And then Blomik is he's back at fullback, of course, after last season where he wasn't at the Cheetahs, but he's not been at his best. He just needs a little bit of game time and a little bit of time to gel with the team again. And then everything's going to be back where it should be. He is a very good player and he is very dangerous when he is at his best. If I look at the resilience of the Cheetahs play and how they've been coming back every game and just hanging on and winning at all costs, I think they will hang on at home and get that another final at home and try to actually win the curry cup final this year so i think the cheetahs will win this one by 12 points okay guys that's the video for this weekend if you did like that please hit the subscribe button i really do appreciate it and then also remember next week the podcast i am doing with the imbiber it is going to be a great one you don't want to miss it and then i'll see you for the next video cheers Bye.